Your daily dose of sports and fun. This is the Morning Drive Podcast from Double T 97.3. Presented by Cantex Roofing and Construction. School delayed a little bit this morning, but we are not delayed uh, at all. We're on... Uh... We're on our usual time this morning. I uh, wanted to get your take on uh, the Baseball Hall of Fame. Uh, they voted in just one yesterday. Uh, Scott Rowland, the third baseman, gets in. And uh, he gets in not by much, but he got in. He needed 75% of the votes cast, ballots cast, and he got 76%. This is his sixth year of eligibility. Um, you had checked off on him, right, as uh, yes. being, being, a, being a Hall of Famer? Yeah, I, I I love that he got in. I, I mean, terrific defender. Um, felt like he was a clutch hitter. And I feel like he was overshadowed in his time because he wasn't one of those media darling kind of guys. But I thought he was really consistent, a good dude. Again, like eight gold gloves. Yep. Mm-hmm. You know, all-star a bunch, all that good stuff. I thought he was a terrific player and just, again, a little bit of a quiet guy and just was never thought of as one of the superstars of the game. But I thought he was a really, really good player. Seven-time uh, all-star, uh, did win a World Series with the uh, St. Louis Cardinals. When you when you hear that he was at 76%, yet you kind of list everything off and you look at him – you look at him and go, that's a Hall of Famer. Does it sometimes kind of astound you, or maybe astound is too strong of a word, surprise you that he's not on more ballots? Um, uh, maybe. Maybe because I thought he was, you know, a great player. But, I mean, I guess it's an opinion. or It's definitely an opinion. I, I, I would have expected more, yes. His first year of eligibility, he received 10% of the vote, 17 his second year, and he becomes the um, Hall of Famer now that has turned it around the most because Duke Snyder from the old Brooklyn Dodgers got to the Hall of Fame after just having 17% of the vote his first year. Here's the other thing is, he's only the ninth third baseman uh, into Cooperstown and just the second in the last 40 years joining Chipper Jones. Now it seems to be a kind of a high standard for uh, for third baseman. Well, they'll get another one soon. Okay, okay. First ballot guy coming up next year. Okay, <laughs> I wonder why that is. Yeah, I. I but it, you know, it's, it, isn't that interesting though? Compare it to. Can you compare it to shortstop or second baseman or? I don't. I don't have those numbers. I, I don't. I don't have those numbers. But it just seems like nine seems low. May, maybe it's the you know for one of the one of the things that I read in this article was that it's the Mike Schmidt uh, George Brett factor where they were they had such high numbers and you could throw Brooks Robinson in those in that same category, but they use Schmidt and Brett as two examples. But those guys, you know, they haven't played in a long time. There've been mm-hmm. there've been a lot of a lot of mm-hmm. third basemen that have come come across uh, since then. Yeah, so, I don't know. I buy into that. Okay, that's that just was in this article. Um, okay, so um, other guys that were close: Todd Helton was at seventy two percent, eleven votes shy of being a, a Hall of Famer. Great, great hitter. Um, pretty good fielder. I think he's. He's hurt by the system quarterback thing of he played in Colorado where the air, you know, allows you to hit more mm-hmm. home runs and all that kind of stuff. Stuff I feel like he's he's punished for that a little bit. Billy Wagner uh, was at sixty eight percent. In close, uh, that's another guy I would like to see in. Okay, and then then the others that are that are not so close, but you kind of wonder. Andrew Jones fifty eight percent, Gary Sheffield at fifty five, and Carlos Beltran. And Jeff Kent, who I believe was in his last year of eligibility, uh, Beltran and uh, Kent were both at 46.5%. Uh, the question is, does Carlos Beltran get in, or is the, the stink of the Astros too much on him? I, I think it's massive. Not not just the Astros. I mean, New York, Boston, all of it. He was involved in all of it. So I think that hurts him. I think Jeff Kent's personality and how he rubbed just about every teammate and media member the wrong way is hurting him 
Um, I'd like to see Wagner get in. And who was the other name you mentioned? I'm sorry. Um, Todd Helton. Yeah. I, you don't think Helton? I don't know you? that I'm all in on Todd Helton. Okay. Then how about Andrew Jones or Gary Sheffield? I, Sheffield has steroid stink with him. So um, he's not just you know loved and mm-hmm. you know, we know that drunken idiot sports writers will use that as an excuse not to put him in even though they put other steroid guys in um mm-hmm. yeah I, I, andrew jones i just don't think he had a long enough career okay it, it feels like he was great great when he was young but he fizzled too quickly in my opinion well at least they elected somebody this year you know that's that was yeah those, those dudes have made that a joke. That was that was uh, that was good news. It's not so. a joke if you're in. Don't get me wrong, but it's, I don't know. It's just so stupid. So, um, you know, coming up, you're going to have some uh, you know some guys that uh, you know you know you kind of look at and go, okay, there'll be some some obvious ones in in the future, but like uh, Ichiro. <clears throat> um, they're saying Ichiro Suzuki should be unanimous. I don't have a problem with that. Okay. Uh, CC Sabathia would be a first-time uh, Hall of Famer in 2025. You buy into I think, that? I, th- I think he's deserving. Okay. So that would hurt guys like Helton and others um, who came close, but no cigar. Considering it, that the average ballot had five names on it this year, yeah, not allowed to vote for ten, it shouldn't hurt them in any way, shape, or form. I was just about, I was just about to bring that up. Should they reduce? Should they reduce the number on that? I think they should reduce the number of people who are voting for the Hall of Fame. Anyone who's got a writer next <clears throat> to their name, but you know, that's just me. Okay, we just go anyone that's an idiot. <laughs> well. Anyone, anyone that voted for Pudge and not Bonds, you're out because you're just making it personal. Because it's about their personality. Man, that that's been any going on any for a of long you time. that voted for Bagwell but not Clemens, you're out. That's that's been go- that's been going on for because it has time, nothing to do with what they did. Yeah, you're just you're choosing Hall of Famers by their personality. See, I, I go back to anybody who voted for Bud C League. The, and didn't vote for the other guys. <clears throat> the average anybody ballot. that we've talked about, you're out because if Selig was in charge and all of the steroids happened, you got to blame him for what happened. There were 13.9 um, percent of the voters who voted for the maximum of 10 players. Uh, that's a huge decline from last year, almost 34 uh, percent. The average ballot this year, as Jeff said, uh, contains just under six names, 5.86, which is a drop off of seven from a year ago kind of feel like that I don't know just thinking out loud that that number probably should that the number you could vote for should be five or six that 10 seems like too many well it hasn't been I don't the know. Last what if years. it's what if there are 10 guys who are legitimately worthy of first ballot hall of famer being a first ballot hall of famers what if there was we just haven't seen that in quite some time no I, I don't know that we've ever four seen years it. ago have we uh, for ten, I'm not for saying 10? to get in, but there's been ten. There's been ten guys on the ballot that deserve to be in. When you include Bonds and Clemens, and you factor in these guys that weren't getting the votes for other reasons. Okay. Mm-hmm. Now, I would agree. This year, there's probably not ten guys on the ballot right now that deserve a vote. Wholeheartedly agree on That's that. That's fair. But in the past decade, I'd say half of those years, there've been ten guys that have deserved to be in that either didn't get in because of steroids or didn't get in because it took them too long to get to 75. So like on a year like this, Jamie, do you, and I don't want to use the word respect, do you like it more that writers were more um, judicious in terms of writing, of putting in five as opposed to the guys that listed 10 names, given that you probably have some names that really only got a vote just because they liked the guy? I don't know. I mean, I think if guys deserve votes, deserve votes, whether it's they vote for two or they vote for eight, they deserve the votes. I think they should get the votes. Okay. The Morning Drive podcast from Double T 97.3 is presented by Cantex Roofing and Construction. It's already been a month since Christmas. I was thinking about that on my way to work today. Today is the 25th day of January 2023. Here is Jeff McGuire. Only 11 more months to shop for Christmas this year. <laughs> Whatever will we do? 
<laughs> oh, <right>. the horror. <laughs> right. Are the Christmas decorations at the store yet? I got to go get some. Oh, uh, I'm sure, yeah. 1939 is where we'll kick this off, gentlemen. In the only, on, in only the second, excuse me, World Heavyweight Championship fight between two black boxers, Joe Lewis KOs John Henry Lewis in the first at Madison Square Garden in New York City. 1960, Will Chamberlain scores 58 points, the most ever by an NBA rookie, as the Warriors beat the Pistons 127 to 117. Pretty good night for a rook. 1974, Ray Kroc, CEO of McDonald's, buys the San Diego Padres baseball team for $12 million. He stole it, just like he stole McDonald's. 1978, San Diego Padres trade pitcher Dave Tomlin and $125,000 to the Texas Rangers for Gaylord Perry. <laughs> he would go on to win the 1978 Cy Young. So, you know, feels like a good trade for the Padres. Yeah. 1987, Super Bowl 21 at the Rose Bowl in Pasadena, California. The New York Giants beat the Denver Broncos 39-20. to Phil Simms is your MVP. He was really good in that game. Wasn't he like 21 at 25? Or, mm -hmm. I mean, like the highest completion percentage ever in the Super Bowl. I think it was something crazy like that. That would get you about 84%. Yeah. Yeah, he was. <laughs> That's uh, pretty good. He, he was he was and you know what I, he still has that little smirk on his face when he does the NFL today which there's a part of me that appreciates that and a part of me that's like I mean, that's, it just he just he he had the ability to kind of have that and then back it up with his ability I met him once interviewed him once and uh, he was giving me grief about being a red raider and he was super cool was he super cool super, didn't you, didn't, I gave it right back to him I said uh, don't be mad at me because we beat up on your boy Chris <laughs> <laughs> and he thought that was hilarious so uh, I grew up rooting for him because my dad's a Giants fan and when I met him that one time he he was he was a That's great awesome. dude I had a good time with him yep I felt he always they always talk about him being a two time Super Bowl champion and I feel bad for him because he got injured mm -hmm. with the second one and Hostet Jeff Hostetler came in and they ended up winning the Super Bowl under him and Yeah, sometimes I wish they hadn't won that one. Sims don't, sometimes <laughs> does Yeah. Sorry about that. Sorry I didn't mean to bring that up. But Sims Sims really deserves more credit for that season than he gets. Mm. Hostetler did a great job though in No relief. doubt. Mm -hmm. Nineteen eighty nine. Michael Jordan scores his 10,000th NBA point in his fifth NBA season. And in 2003, at the Australian Open, women's tennis, Serena Williams wins her first, fifth, excuse me, Grand Slam singles title and fourth straight, beating her older sister, Venus, 7-6, 3-6, for her first Australian title. Man, that's crazy. Two sisters in a major open. Yeah, no doubt. It is National Irish Coffee Day. Guessing both. I know I'm Jamie out. is out. I'm out, yeah. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't mind an Irish coffee this morning. A little whiskey, coffee, and uh, sugar and some cream on top? Sign me up. Uh, yesterday we missed a birthday, but it wasn't my fault. This is the name that we've been looking for, and I finally got recognized on Twitter yesterday, so I was able to identify this young man's birthday. I say young man. He's older than I am. Happy birthday, former Red Raider running back, Byron Hansbart. Mm, okay. 47 yesterday. Wow. He has now been added to our list, and we will not miss him next year. Okay. Like, I'll have to go. I won't have to go back and get him next year, like I did there. Uh, today, Alicia Keys is 42. Vladimir Velensky. You know him better as the president of Ukraine, is 45. Patrick Willis is 38, and Mark Schlereth is 57. And on this day in 1961, President John F. Kennedy becomes the first U.S. president to hold a live televised news conference. 
From the podium in the State Department Auditorium, Kennedy read a prepared statement regarding the famine in Congo, the release of two American aviators from Russia's custody, and impending negotiations for an atomic test ban treaty. He then opened the floor for questions from reporters, answering queries on a variety of topics, including relations with Cuba, voting rights, and flood aid to impoverished, uh, food aid, excuse me, to impoverished Americans. Hmm. And that. This is Dan Sports History. All right, this is Dan Sports History, 651 this morning here in the morning drive. So LeBron James set some history yesterday as he uh, has uh, a 40-point game now against every NBA team in uh, in the NBA. Nobody's – I don't think anybody That's else has cool. done – I don't think anybody else has done that. And he's on the verge of becoming the all-time scoring leader um, to surpass Kareem Abdul-Jabbar – uh, Kareem has three thirty-eight thousand three hundred eighty-seven points. LeBron thirty-eight thousand two hundred ten over his career. <clears throat> Kareem did it in fifteen hundred and sixty games. LeBron's going to do it in far fewer. He's at uh, he's at fourteen hundred and four. Now, Chuck, you do know what he's working on, right? Being LeBron. Okay, he, he's been working on this all season. The sky hook. So be watching oh, is he for when do... he breaks the record on that point if he uses the skyhook or not. Oh, okay. Okay, I don't... And I, is, is that as a... Uh, is this a true story? This is, is true. Is this to... Is this to show up, Kareem? Or is I think this it's to, to honor? honor? I think it's to honor. Well, their, their relationship yeah, no, hasn't... Surely it's not to show him up. Well, I know, but I mean, their relationship hasn't been... It's pretty been pretty icy, but maybe it's maybe it's better. Well, here's my here's my question for you. Better not be Chuck's version of the hook shot. Yeah, probably, better be a real sky hook. Be probably it'd be. There's a lot of things that he does that are real. Um, but here's my question for you: Is if it were anybody other than LeBron, do you think we'd be talking about it more? Uh, not maybe me, uh, you and me, but I mean the sports world because it doesn't seem like it's getting very much play. I mean, Kareem's held this number for. 40 plus years. If the Lakers were better, it would probably get some play. Oh, I think it's it will get a ton of play on Sports Center and on ESPN and, and the channels that broadcast the NBA when it gets close. Okay, do you okay. I, I I just don't think the rest of us are paying attention to the NBA. I don't think that would be any bigger for anybody else if it was Kevin Durant or I don't know, Giannis, whatever. I don't. I don't think it's what about. What if Michael Jordan had done it? Michael Jordan would have done it in a time where uh, the NBA was a bigger deal than yeah. it is now. Yeah. Uh, Jordan is fifth on the all-time list, and he played just short of 500 games less than Kareem, and is about 6,000 points behind Kareem. So, you know, do the easy math, and you'd say, well. It probably wouldn't have taken him 1,400 games to get to uh, mm. Kareem's number. Yeah. But he was kind of done, too. Sure. At the yeah. end. Well, that's what end. happens when you retire twice in a career. Right. Those those two years cost him, right? Sure. It cost him big. And uh, then the second retirement before he came back for the third time. You know, and then, uh, and then Kobe Bryant, he was close. He was within, you know, 5,000 points of Kareem. Carl Malone... Came the closest before um, LeBron. He's in third place. He is 72 points shy of uh, 37,000. And again, Kareem had 38,837 and Malone 36,928. But he was done at the end. He hung around for a long time, if you yeah. like. He was, he was ring chasing. Ring. Yeah, yeah, he was ring chasing at the end. So, which again, I do not blame him uh, for that. It's just. Uh, you would have liked to, if, if he was going to win one, I'm sure he would have loved to have won one with Utah as opposed to anybody else. So what you're saying is if you were uh, getting engaged, don't call Carl Malone because that mailman can't deliver a ring. No. No. And and the other question. I would, I would never call Carl Malone. Yeah. <laughs> Here, here's the deal. Has Did Aaron Judge's chase of Roger Maris get more, cha- more publicity, more buzz than... Uh, LeBron's chase of Kareem because I think it has I would agree with that and I and I don't really have a problem with that the morning drive podcast from double t 97.3 is presented by Cantex roofing and construction 
Thanks for uh, being with us today. Uh, with regard to the road uh, conditions, if you're, uh, I think if you're 50 plus, you had this in uh, driver's ed, and, I, and I've brought this up before, but it's always a good friendly reminder to utilize the IPTI process, Jamie. Okay. Okay. The IPTI process, and I'm being serious, is identify local potential hazards within the driving scene. Okay. Predict. Also known as Chuck on the road behind you. Predict, judge where the possible points of conflict may occur. Chuck coming up behind you and slamming into the back of you. <clears throat> D, decide, determine what action to take, when and where to take it. Get off the road as fast as possible if Chuck is behind you. Stay away from me. <laughs> and four, E, execute, act by maneuvering the car to avoid conflicts. Turn the wheel away from Chuck. Known yes. as the Quickly. Ip- IPDI process. So if you... Uh, just, just remember your go back to your driver's ed training and uh, remember the IPTI process. All right. Uh, let's see. Yates Flooring Center chat line is open. Go to double dot com for that or the mobile app. All right. Uh, Coach Mark Adams met with the media yesterday and uh, talked about West Virginia and his team, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, first, let's uh, let's let's go to how his team and how they get Kevin O'Banner going on offense. Well, um, you know, he's behind me shooting right now, and he's in the gym working every day. He's a guy that's, uh, you know, he wants to win, and and he understands he's got to start making shots. And and I think it's a little bit just he's putting so much pressure on himself. I was really pleased that he, uh, on the defensive end, he took charges uh, and rebounded and got on the floor and did all those things that we want him to do. So, uh, well, he's sure trying. I, I just think he's got to, uh, you know, just take a deep breath and enjoy the game and, and just, uh, you know, believe that he can get this thing done. I think he's just putting a little more pressure on himself. Probably you could say that probably to a man, almost everybody on that team, I would think. I mean, I mean they all, I'm sure, are performers who want to, you know, make good of everything that they've, been given or received and then they look at kind of how they're doing and nobody wants to fail so there's probably something to be said for everybody over there right on the men's basketball side that they probably feel the heat or feel the pressure not not that people are going to be like off with their heads so to speak but just the pressure to perform and to do well because I think when when you are expected to do well and you're not you probably have a tendency to put more pressure on yourself than what others are putting on you. Well, I think it's, it's really just about helping the team win, and I think uh, Kevin knows that him shooting the ball better would would be a big factor in that. So, yeah, I don't I don't know if it's you know him worried about pressure from the outside or anything like that. He just he wants to win, and yeah. and he knows he's not playing at his best right now. I don't think there's a magic potion. Um, the question was asked was a good one, but. I don't think there's a way to fix it. Just, you know, get in the gym, try to shoot your way out of it, and hopefully uh, get your confidence back. Yeah. Because that doesn't appear that he has it with his shot right now. Yeah, so sometimes you got to go to the low-hanging fruit, and right now in the Big 12, there is no low-hanging fruit. In fact, teams may look at you and go, hey, here's low-hanging fruit. Here's, here's an opportunity for us to get right with our team. We'll go play Texas Tech, whether that's fair or not, right? I don't think anybody is saying that. I think th- these teams are smart enough to see the scores of these games and realize it, they're not getting blown out every yeah. game. They're right there every game. So I, I don't think anybody's looking around going, "Okay, we got Tech on the schedule. Here's an easy one." No, I don't. I don't. I don't believe that either. But we're I mean, not, I, mean I don't think we're the low hanging fruit. We may be the lowest team right now in the standings, but. I just, I just don't think anybody's saying that about anybody in the conference. Uh, here's uh, Coach Mark Adams talking about the missed free throws. The Red Raiders coming into this game, shooting in the Big 12, 64% from the free throw line. Yeah, I mean, uh, you just trust in the process. I mean, you, these guys just uh, – we, we really remind these guys that every free throw, it's a ritual. We do the same thing, uh, you know, like a golfer does or, or a baseball player getting up to the plate. You, you, you go through certain things, and if it's one or two dribbles, take a deep breath and just remind them their ritual and just trust in the process and, and, uh, and have confidence. Mm, last word was the key part. Have confidence. Confidence, yep. Yeah, have confidence. Um, all right, so here is uh, Coach Adams on preparing for a physical team like they'll face tonight in West Virginia. 
Well, we just talk about it, show them film, show them how, um, you know, uh, just how in, intense that uh, West Virginia plays and uh, where they like to get the ball, they like to get it inside. And, and uh, you know, Coach Huggins is old school and, you know, uh, you know, wants that ball close to the basket and shoot it from there. And, and then uh, if you miss it, they'll, just, they'll send sometimes four or five guys to go rebound it. So uh, we'll continue to remind our guys that we have to block out and everybody's got to do the job. And, and we've got a team rebound with that as well. So rebounding-wise, West Virginia out-rebounds their opponents by about three a game. Uh, Tech is giving up about a rebound per ball game. And um, Red Raiders do have slightly more offensive rebounds than opponents. But West Virginia, they have uh, a substantial number, 28 more offensive rebounds in conference play than their opponents. Mm-hmm. So second chance points could potentially be a factor tonight, especially if they're driving, shooting, getting a rebound, putting it back up getting fouled, and making the shot, that, that all becomes very uh, problematic uh, for any team. Um, and that might be a, a situation tonight. And meanwhile, um, if you're shooting and missing and not getting those uh, offensive rebounds, more likely they're, you're shooting from outside or from three, and it puts you in a spot where... Um, puts you in a spot where, you know, the, the rebounds aren't as, aren't as easy because they're long rebounds. And mm-hmm. so they become almost 50-50 balls. So that, uh, that becomes uh, a challenge as well. All right, one, uh, one last thing uh, from Coach Adams is how his team and how they work on their late game problems in terms of finishing. We'll, we'll simulate situations. We'll, we'll um, you know, uh, do a, you know, do different uh, uh, a special, uh, you know, plays late in the game, and then and then go ahead and look at some stuff they're doing. But just just it's mainly just a reminder to uh, play hard and uh, play with some you know intensity, and then and then you know encourage your teammates be a team player and, and don't try to do too much late. Just we don't want to beat ourselves late in the ball game with turnovers or bad shots. We got this close, Chuck. Play smart, uh, play tough, play uh, play hard, play, play smart, smart, play, play together. Yeah, we got the the play hard, play, s- and I was like, he's gonna say it, and then he didn't. <laughs> <sighs> did you did you want to take him aside afterwards to go? No, coach, I wanted to get hard, home and smart, get the audio cut up to, so I could go to take my nap in the afternoon. Play after together. Up. Yeah. No, uh, but if he had said it, I would immediately thought of you when he just get, play smart, play, uh, <clears throat> play tough, play smart, play together. That's and, what and, I was waiting for. And and the last thing you know, he said there about encouraging your teammates and playing together. I mean that 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 may be part maybe part of it too, you know, in terms of these late game. And I'd say late game; they're not necessarily collapses, but I mean when you when you've led at the half or led in the second half of games and just haven't been able to finish, you'd like to be able to get get it over the line, right? And you know, at some point in time, you're going to have to perform in the waning moments of a game, whether you're getting a stop or or making a shot or something along those. And really, that's like, what it's more about. It's more about making enough shots. Yeah. Teams go on runs late, and you can't match them. Yeah, yeah. The over the over seven on possessions, the over eight on possessions, the eleven to nothing runs that other teams have gone on. Those have been the killers. They've also been a killer for this team for the last what five or six years that we've seen these runs in games and your mm-hmm. losses. That you Lack when a team scoring. gets rolling, you mm-hmm. just can't stop it. Yeah, you can't and. Not even like stop their offense, but you can't get any of your own going if you're not stopping. Can't get anything to fall for you. Is there a, is there a guy that uh, beyond O'Banner that you really want to see step up tonight? Is that is that Daniel Bacho or is that Bardo Zamac or is that Davion Harmon or give me a, give me somebody besides O'Banner? I'll go with Amac. Okay. I mean, he, those bigs are going to be challenged. The physicality that West Virginia always brings to the table, and they love to get to the paint. So, both Bacho and Amac are, are going to need to play well and stay out of foul trouble. Mm-hmm. Stay out of foul trouble. That's a, that'd be a big key for them. I wonder if Bob St- uh, Bob Huggins brought his uh, big stool with him for this ball game. I would assume yes. He brings or it do every we have game. to provide that? Is that part of the writer for Bob Huggins when he comes to town? That. I think it's got a WVU on it. I bet. Okay, we're not providing that. I wouldn't. I wouldn't I guess think. So. Yeah. In uh, in Big Twelve play this year, only one Red Raider has fouled out in Big Twelve play. Just one, uh, two. I'm sorry. You had uh, Jalen Tyson and Daniel Bacho. 
who have fouled out. Uh, and opponents, only one opponent has fouled out in Big 12 play so far. But fouls may be a factor tonight uh, with the physicalness of uh, West Virginia and what they bring to the table. We'll have the game for you tonight at 5, tip at 6 here on Double T 97.3. Jamie's question of the day is next. This is the Morning Drive Podcast from Double T 97.3, presented by Cantex Roofing and Construction. Jamie's question of the day on Double T 97.3 is presented by Bizarre Solutions. Call them today for a free cybersecurity audit. Well, I'm just curious what possibly could be going through your mind this morning that you would like to question us about, me, Jeff, and our fine listening audience. Other than our sanity. Okay. Well, I mean... I don't think there's any question about that. No, no, but he still has questions. That doesn't mean we have answers. All right, I'm going completely away from anything we've talked about recently just because it's it's all painful. Okay. Uh, <laughs> so <laughs> I'm going to go to the new Big 12. The new Big 12, okay? I want you to tell me what school and what team are you the most excited about the Red Raiders competing with? In the new Big 12. You know, the, the first school that comes to my mind, and I've been critical of them in the past because they're of their refusal to um, play on Sunday or at least want everybody else to move their whole world uh, because of that. I'm intrigued by BYU. I, I think, you know, they, they uh, their football program's always been very good. I mean, solid. I'm not great, but solid. Um I'm curious to see what it what it looks like going there. Uh, what what it's going to be like uh, playing them in basketball and the other sports. So I'm going to say BYU for me. I'm torn in this answer. Um, BYU's on my list. Uh, I'm interested to see how that goes. But also the there's the aspect of them not playing on Sundays. It's going to really bother me every time baseball season kicks around because that whole week is going to have to get changed just because they won't play on Sunday. Yeah. Yeah. And I mean, so you play on Thursday, Friday, Saturday, instead of Friday, Saturday, Sunday. And then it's going to be like big 12 tournament. If they advance, that's when the, those are my hills that I have to climb. Um, I I think the baseball thing is totally overblown. They are my hills. And I think there were, there was a point where I, I didn't like it. And now I totally disagree with myself. I'm not there yet. I, I have hope. Um, so I'm really debating between UCF and Cincinnati. And I think in different sports, it's different things. In football, I'm more interested to see what UCF has to bring to the table. Uh, in where I think Texas Tech is and where UCF thinks they are. Where that kind of battle can be done. But for basketball, it's Cincinnati uh, between those two. Um, I Not that they're a huge basketball school, but... I feel like that's going to be a, an interesting matchup. Yeah, so um, I guess my question was really when I said what school and what team, that meant specifically which school with which sports team there. I guess that wasn't clear. I am going to go with BYU football specifically. Okay. That's what I was looking for. Okay. Well, uh, if you asked, if you were to. I, re- BYU. Go up, sorry. <laughs> I just think BYU's got a cool history with their football program and the players that have played there. And uh, it's it's obviously competitive and all the above. So that's the one that I'm the most excited about. Cincinnati's got their football team rolling right now. But then again, they've lost their head coach. And I wonder how that's going to go. Plus, I, I don't. I don't know about the passion there that you're considering with BYU, which I think will make for really good atmospheres. So yeah, BYU football is my answer. Okay, that was if you if I'd have maybe done a better job of listening to the question, I would have said BYU football. Okay. So, okay. So I I I agree. You with could you. be completely across the board with BYU though, in in basketball yeah. and how all that goes. There's not that's not necessarily a wrong answer. I mean. I'll be honest. I mean, I would probably pick if basketball of the newbies, uh, just because I don't want to pick Houston for anything, even though their basketball program is really well. I I think I'm I think I would go with with Cincinnati in basketball. Yeah, I think I would agree with you on that. Although I am intrigued 
with UCF because I feel like we kind of have a basic knowledge of BYU and a basic knowledge of Cincinnati because of what they've done here recently. And then we know all about Houston. I feel like that we, 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 we know enough of, about them. But, we, you know, in terms of UCF, have... Just completely unknown. I agree. Completely, completely unknown. Yeah. So I think that will be somewhat fascinating <laughs> for us to, uh, for un- to uncover and, and all, all, of those, all of those things, you know, to, uh, to do that. Uh, 7.35 this morning here on the morning drive. Somebody asked this, wh- what sport from which school excites you the most? Which is basically what we just answered, right? Or the, yeah. For the most part. So mm-hmm. I'm going to say BYU in football, though. Cincinnati in basketball, and then UCF, just everything. Everything about them. I mean, what does their campus look like? You know, how close are they to Disney World? Um, you know, what kind of, what kind of uh, unique kind of restaurants do they have in and around their campus? You know, um, what's the... What's the food fair? What's the what's the what's the chant of UCF? What's what 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 is it that we're not supposed to like about them? You know what do they do that irritates their most ardent you know rivals? Uh, does anybody hate them? Does anybody love them? Who is their biggest rival? Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. You just assume that they hate Florida and Florida State, like yeah. we hate A and M in Texas. Sure, sure. What is their what do their banners look like in their arena? I'm always, you know, I'm always kind of intrigued by that. That <clears throat> makes one of us. Yeah, mm-hmm. I know. I'm, I know. I'm the, the kind of the lone engine on that. Um, that kind of goes and kind of takes a look at things. I think goes, you mean lone commander? <laughs> lone commander? Well, yeah. I'd say that. Yeah. I'm surprised Chuck mm-hmm. hasn't said I'm interested who their broadcasters are. Well, yeah, I'm sure. I always want to meet the meet the opposing guys. You know. <laughs> my partner on Lady Raider basketball takes it to the next level. He's he is a next level uh, broadcaster guy, but I enjoy meeting the other guys too, and the and the gals, and talking to the whomever. We'll we'll talk to anybody. Well, I mean, I think that's pretty well documented. Could have stopped it. Talk to whomever. <laughs> yeah, that's fine. That's not a yeah, bad thing. We'll talk to we'll talk to pretty yeah, much good, anyway. Good ambassadors for the university. We're trying to be. Mm-hmm. We're trying to be. Uh, and they'll ask Chuck, what's with that, you know, hermit guy for in your baseball program? Why doesn't he speak to anybody? And why is the other guy always yelling? <laughs> uh, I used to use universities to teach regional geography, and now you got UCF with tech, right? Yeah, no, no doubt. No doubt, right. No, no doubt. Uh, this, the Golan Band used UCF's football field to practice when we went to the Tangerine Bowl in 2001. I was part of the band then. Okay, well, how about that? South Florida is UCF's biggest rival. That would make sense. Yeah, that would make sense. But it's about to be anybody in the Big 12. But I'll tell you, I mean, that little road trip for BYU to South Florida, or to uh, UCF, that's, uh, that's going to be quite the hike. I might serve two meals on that plane. When, they, when BYU has to go play UCF and something, it's a ways. Yeah, it's a ways. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and I'm real curious if they're going to do, you know, like if when Tech or any of these schools goes to play, you know, those schools like uh, whether it's Cincinnati and and West Virginia or if it's West Virginia and UCF or you know, will you will you will you play basketball on a Wednesday and a Saturday, or will you will you do a Saturday Monday deal in terms of the Big Twelve men because they I mean they're you do that a couple times a year, you know in which you'll do that stay on the road and you know take advantage of a of two for basically one. Mm, man, it's exciting for you. You and Fink can have a, I mean you can tear it up in two cities <laughs> on one road trip. <laughs> we don't really tear it, it up. This is not that uncommon. You'll see Major League Baseball teams. I know we're talking about college. No, but it's not like these guys can't schedule a weekend where you're in one city on Friday night. Mm -hmm. You play Saturday. You wake up Sunday. You go to the airport. You fly to the next city for a Monday night game. It's that are in the same time zone or as close together as possible. Scheduling is not that going to. That part of the scheduling doesn't bother me if you're making it more convenient for all the schools involved. Okay. 
Uh, somebody asked this question. Do you all still see uh, Utah, Colorado, and the Arizona schools coming over? I don't know about Colorado. I certainly would like to see Arizona and Arizona State. Utah would be good, too. Utah would be good, too. Good programs. I mean, yeah. you know, obviously Oregon and Washington are the two cat daddies that are left in the Pac-12 once UCLA and USC leave. I just feel like they're going to end up in the Big Ten, but maybe I'm completely wrong there. No. I, I don't I don't see them moving. I, I think the Pac-12 is going to continue to exist. Okay. Yeah. I mean, who knows? Maybe they... Maybe they pick somebody up. But I'd like to, I guess if everybody, I'd like to see Arizona and Arizona State come over. I think that'd make a lot of sense. Your daily dose of sports and fun. This is the Morning Drive Podcast from Double T 97.3. Presented by Cantex Roofing and Construction. Thanks for being with us with Jamie Lent and Jeff McGuire. I'm Chuck Hines. Take your thoughts and comments today on the Yates Flooring Center chat line. If you have a score prediction or a feeling, an inkling, if uh, you have a crystal ball, uh, if you've been to see any soothsayers and uh, can predict the future for us, we would uh, be uh, all at it uh, this morning on the Yates Morning Center chat line or the Benchmark Hotline. Come to you this morning from the First United Bank studio here in uh, downtown Lubbock. Roads are pretty clear. School's delayed. Maybe a big breakfast at your house for the kids before you send them off. Maybe uh, you or mom or somebody can cook them something up a little bit more than just pouring them a bowl of Cheerios or whatever your usual fare is in the morning. Send them off with a good hearty breakfast. Got a hearty one. Yeah. Maybe some oatmeal or something like that. So, anyway, just... Did you get your cereal sorted out from, like, two months ago? Cereal sorted out. Like, your cereal had other cereal put into it, and you were very frustrated with it? Mm. You don't remember what I'm talking about? No, not really. Like, it took the... I do. Your, Your daughter... Mix oh, some together. Just, oh, they just. Um, he ch- told us about that the, the next day in the cabinet. The cabinet, maybe. Couldn't find the Cheerios. I don't. No, no. there was something extra in your Cheerio. Mm. And you were not happy with that, huh? No, I had something to do with your daughter. She, she said, "Yeah, I did that." Oh, okay. We already got the upon further review. We got the oh no no morning drive update. We got the morning drive update on that one. Okay. Mm-hmm. It sounds like it settled then. It was riveting. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it was riveting. Clearly, I was not paying attention. I riveted. Yeah, it was cl- clearly. Would you... The fascination overwhelmed me. Yeah, I could I could, I could, tell. I mean, that's why I've kind of moved on from it. I, mm-hmm. knew, that, I knew that it completely bored you, so... We appreciate Jeff bringing back up. Yeah, right. <laughs> right. I just didn't remember if we got a res- resolution. Well, I think that. I think we did. I don't. I I do not know. And him commenting on getting a hearty breakfast r- sparked my brain. That <clears> I don't remember getting a resolution. I I could tell you that I had a nice hearty bowl of oatmeal in in Morgantown the other day. That was that was it was good as opposed to the runny oatmeal that I had in Manhattan, Kansas, which was really kind of shocking to me. But again, you don't want to hear about that. It, would you ever go to a soothsayer or a uh, Somebody that could read your hands or palms or... For entertainment purposes. Okay. I probably would do it. I mean, just, yeah, have at it. What yeah, if... I don't think I... I mean, I would... Like, you've only got two weeks to live. I don't, I don't think I'm going to start planning how to split my goods up or anything. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> but I would, I would your... do it for fun. It would what be entertaining. If, would you be... Would you be more entertained if it was like you're going to... And by split my goods up, I mean start handing out bills to uh, <laughs> okay. people that pay off for me. Okay. Yeah. Uh, would you be more concerned if they said, ah, boy, your life's going to really take a turn here for the worse? Would you laugh that off or would you, it be easier to laugh off that you're going to be just incredibly wealthy and you can do whatever you want to do and you could just... In, in your case, if you just wanted to do just do Texas Tech baseball and say to hell with all of us um, and walk away. I'm confused with the question. Is, I'm the sorry. question is then, if the soothsayer said to you, you're going to come into a ton of money where you can make life decisions based on what you want to do, not working for the man, or, oh, doesn't look too good for you in the next two months, you might want to consider getting your final arrangements in order. I would probably pay attention more towards the negative than the positive. Yeah, I think we all would. Yeah, I, I think, think most would. people would. I think yeah. we all would. I, I think I would just say, 
Oh wow, she said there's a possibility of that could happen. So maybe yeah. I maybe I maybe I better need maybe I better start being nicer to Chuck in the mornings. <laughs> <laughs> so I don't leave on a bad note. Yeah. You know? Yeah. I don't want the listening audience to think I'm Chuck like the Jamie, last, right? The last the last thing that you did to me was just mean and then then people will have no. you want to have a they always have a good taste in their mouth with you. I mean you're you are Teflon man. You, they love. They love you. They love you. Everywhere I go, I just love Jamie. I just, I just love him. <laughs> yeah. okay. Everywhere I go, everywhere I go. <laughs> That's Hell, nice. even the Mountaineer came up to me the other day and said, "Do you get to work with Jamie Lynn sure ever?" Sure did. Sure did. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, actually, the uh, the Mountaineer was a woman Mountaineer the other day. Well, nothing that says no. a mountaineer can't be a woman. I know, but it was just kind of, just it was just kind of just kind of surprised me. I didn't had had. Did she seen. have the same beard? <laughs> no, no, she didn't. She did. <laughs> she wore the same, you know. Okay, so there's nothing out, outfit though. There's nothing that says the mountaineer can't be a female. Because right. I'm sure there's plenty of female mountaineers out there. Yeah. But like for the mascot of West Virginia, it feels like he needs to be a dude with a big beard. Yeah, usually, usually is, uh-huh. but and she, but she had the musket in her hand and went. Bah! Yeah, she's got a musket in her hand. She can do just about anything she wants. She can. Uh-huh. All right, uh, this is from Eric on Wheels. On cold mornings like this, I make oatmeal overnight in a crock pot. Today is made with blueberries, and it is great. Mm-hmm. I bet you that would warm your the cockles of your heart. As my mom would say, stick to your ribs, Jamie. It'll stick to your ribs. Jamie, would you like some oatmeal? It'll stick to your ribs. Do I want that? Yeah. She, she, I don't know. She always felt like that it needed to stick to your ribs. So, so it will stay, keep you nice and warm throughout the day. Oh, okay. That was the whole theory behind yeah. the stick to your ribs kind of deal and the oatmeal. It'll I eat a lot of ribs. cheese, so I bet I get a lot that's sticking to my ribs. <laughs> stick to your my ribs. My waistline kind of shows um, that off. Bobby Hot Dogs, leave it to Chuck to round down everything associated with the Periwinkle Pussycats. Now he's taking shots at the oatmeal. At their oatmeal. Well, I wouldn't take any shots at the oatmeal. How about those uniforms on Saturday? What a the, horrendous look for Kansas State. The, the lavender? All in one way or all in the other. I mean, you ha- they had lavender tops and dark purple bottoms. Yeah. I mean, yeah. what in the world? I mean, it That's, looks like the... Laundry guy forgot to wash one or the other. That's kind of a look for them back to the 60s. It's horrible. Yeah, that's... Uh, Chuck Is that what Mon- Roe Blackman was wearing back in the day? Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Roe Mitch Black- Ripman. Mitch Richmond, yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. Not every throwback is good. Mm-hmm. And right. I, that's something like, some teams need yeah. to learn. I like Mitch Richmond. He's a really good player. He's part of Run TMC. Did you know that? Uh, you know who the rest of that crew is? Uh-uh. $10 if you can tell us. Run TMC. Yeah. Uh, is, I, okay. I, okay. Okay. I, I I'm not giving you the ten dollars, okay. but I'll give you hints. Okay. It was when he was with the Golden State Warriors. Three get great players together. Yeah. Was Tim McAllister, one of them. I've never heard of Tim McAllister. <laughs> okay. He had Tim right. <laughs> okay. <laughs> From UTEP. Tim Hardaway. Tim Hardaway. Okay. 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 Tim Hardaway, Mitch Richmond, and the. That era, great Golden State Warriors player. Uh, escapes me. Chris White Mullen. Dude. Chris Mullen. Oh, of course I should have been able to get Chris Mullen. They were great together. <sighs> Let's see here. See, uh, I used to love the NBA. I mean, I used to love it. I I, 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 I enjoyed I, it when I enjoyed the NBA in the 80s. I enjoyed the NBA. I in the went 80s. through seasons where I never missed, I kid you not, a single minute. Of Chicago Bulls. Games. Oh, I know. I know. You've okay. shared that with us. It's well documented. And had the whole season on VHS. Would record them all for some stupid reason. And you you had your dates around with the, with right. the misses around the Bulls games. And if, and she, if the wanted, Bulls... she wanted to do things and the Bulls were on, it was like, you can come watch the Bulls game with me. But she I'm was, missing right? the game. Sure. No, she really loves you. You know, well, she, at least she used to. <laughs> This has been the Morning Drive Podcast, presented by Cantex Roofing and Construction. Check out our library of Double T 97.3 podcasts at double T 97.3.com.